everybody to Globusters. I'm your host, Bob, Xanadude60, and uh, let me turn it over to my best friend and probably the best human being I've ever met, uh, Jaron Campanella. Jaron, go ahead. Hey, Bob, thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, it's exciting to be here. Happy to be running the show today. Bob is not feeling that well. He'll be here, but uh, it's just I'm going to be running it. So unfortunately, you have to deal with that. We've got a whole bunch of panel members. Let's introduce them. First, we've got uh, Zach. Good times for all. Zach, you there? Yeah. Hey, Jaron. How are you, my awesome friend? Awesome to be here, man. Uh, good. Have, happy ah, to have pretty you. good. Good. Everything been good? Do you have anything exciting this week? I, my moon thing happened yesterday, you know, measuring the rotation. I got some pics. It was like middle of the day everywhere. So unless you had a really good camera, it was hard to get pics. So I, unfortunately, I have a guy in the Falkland Islands, down in Australia, and up in England. And none of them, there was two sky outs where it was just gray and the other guy didn't have a camera that could actually pick it up during the day that well so i got mine i'm going to be going over that data here probably this afternoon like really measuring the rotation and all that stuff but uh no it did what i expected it to do so that's a that's a plus all right sweet maybe we can look at that uh we've also got iru landucci iru welcome to the show thank you jeram hello everyone how you doing guys uh, I'm pretty, I, I start feeling a little, not nervous, but uh, in two days I travel again to Argentina. So I need to, you know, get past all the nonsense uh, things of COVID in the airport and things like that. It's really crazy. Yeah, it does not sound like fun. No, no, no not anymore. Not anymore. But at least I'm going to go home again and stay there. For a few months with my T- family TSA, friends. You just need to look inside your asshole a little bit too, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds exciting. Exactly. But no, no. But at least uh, with only a PCR test is enough. Uh, of course, made by Doctor Landucci, and yes. uh, with that is enough to to get into the the country. I don't need any other crazy stuff. So. Well, good. Speaking of PCR and all the wonderful things that have to do with that, and we'll be covering that extensively or you know talk about it but on the uh, second half and when we go over to rockfin only where they still allow free speech but we've got uh steve here from space busters steve welcome to the show happy to have you you guys have been doing some amazing work over there thank you <clears throat> excuse me uh, <laughs> i lost my voice but yeah it's great to be back yeah definitely we'll go to rockfin uh yeah and talk you... about that I've, I've got a lot of stuff to talk about if we can get to it so i'm along for the ride the first hour and Hear what I've been missing from the flat Earth community. I've I've been so busy doing the other thing. I feel like Grandpa Simpson. I'm I'm outdated. <laughs> so I'm here to catch up a little bit. <laughs> we'll try and catch you up for sure. And we've got yeah. uh, John the Morgal here. John, thanks for joining us. Welcome to the show. What's up, everybody? How's it going? 
Hello, doing well. hello. Doing well. Uh, and we've got, well, Bob was here, but I think he, he ducked out for a little bit. He's got some stomach issues, and we've got Austin here. Austin, how are you, my friend? Pretty good. What's up, homie? So I heard that you are, you, you're halfway through a new Globusters intro. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. It's going to be super cool. Uh, I still have to lay my verse. So I have to take the I have to take the fall on that one. It's my, I haven't laid my verse yet, but uh, yeah, it's cool. Kai crushed it per usual. So we can already hear the version with Kai on it. Yes. Can, can we get a sneak peek? Can we can we listen to that? Uh, yeah, I can try to send it to you. I sent it to Bob. Um, um, how do you want right. to send? It? Can you send it? Oh, it won't go in the chat here on Skype. Uh, maybe I can try. Try it. See if it does. If it does, I'll play it for everybody so we can get at least a. An idea. Uh, Doc Michael says Bob was first. That was actually me. I was actually first under Bob's account. But anyway, um, yes, it's Steve. Steve from Space Busters is here. What's up, Grace? Nice to see you. Uh, she's calling Austin Witsit a legend. And I would agree. Austin, have you ever tried freestyling? Yeah. Yeah. Very difficult, sure. right? Uh, well, uh, in a way, it's more, it's, it's easier to me because uh you don't have to like force yourself you don't like slow your mind down i don't know it's kind of like catching a slant route like if you run the slant route and the throw is high and you don't see it till the last second like you'll instinctively just snatch it right it's easier yeah it's a lot like that yeah for me i mean everyone's everyone's different um like that song i did in the field i freestyled that somebody sent me a link to this guy i forgot his name now jeez harry mac does that sound familiar yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. I mean, and they send me this. They're like, if you like rap, watch this guy. I watch for like five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And all of a sudden, I'm like, is this the most talented person I've ever seen in my life? <laughs> like, I could not believe that that was real. And at first, I was like, yeah. nah, he's got it pre written. Nah, this can't be real. And then he's out on the street doing it with real people in front of him. I'm like, wow, what a photographic memory he must have. Dude, That's- it's really cool. Yeah. I was thinking actually about doing that when I do activism you because should. it make it much harder for people to get mad at me, right? Yeah. They'll love you. Right. Yeah. It's, um, it's pretty insane. If you haven't seen him, he's got like 350,000 subs. So he should have a ton more. But um, yeah, he goes on Omegle and does live uh, interaction, you know, freestyle rap and does it on the streets down at, I think he does it where, he does it where you and I were doing it down south in LA at, a, what was that, Santa Monica Pier? Now I can't remember where we were at. You know, the place uh, where we did the, the activism where Kai got on the mic and everybody hated us all day. Venice uh, Beach? Yeah, yeah, it was Venice Beach. Yeah, so he does it down there. Uh, by the way, I don't know if I told you this, but I don't know if you guys ever heard this. So I got totally burnt that day, and we weren't even outside very long, right? We were like, I don't know, we got there at like 10, and I left by like two or three, and my whole face was just torched. Everything got burnt, and somebody told me, Oh, you had sunglasses on, huh? I was like, Yeah, why? And they said, Oh, don't wear sunglasses, and you won't get sunburnt. I'm like, Wait, what? And I've been looking into this, and there's some people who have some videos out about it that. Yeah, that our eyes are supposed to recognize the sun, and then they regulate your body, and they make it so you don't get burnt. You ever heard that before? But if you wear sunglasses, you'll get sunburnt because your eyes can't tell your body that the sun's out? Yeah, dude, I swear. I, I recently heard, I, I think that sunglasses is a huge little trick, and it blocks a certain spectrum of the light uh, that supposedly activates your pineal gland more so. It's so uh, funny, so too, because I, I was always one of those yeah, haters. I hate there, anybody. There maybe. I, I was going to say, real quick, I hate anybody I who wears. maybe something to that. Go ahead. But you know, being blonde headed and blue eyed, man, I I get sunburned pretty easily. But uh, I, I had never heard that, but it does make some degree of sense, doesn't it? It seems to. And I've always well, hated. Yeah, there's a liquid. I've there's always hated people that eye. are uh, wearing sunglasses inside. Now I'm going to be that guy who only wears sunglasses inside. <laughs> I'm just not going to wear them outside. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, yeah, a liquid in your eyes, and the actual light will um will uh, tell your melanin how much how much skin your melanin should produce when that liquid picks up light and starts warming up a little bit. So yeah, by putting on sunglasses, you're not letting your body tell your skin. You're not telling your eyes to tell your skin, Hey, you need more melanin or you're going to get burned. So yeah, sunglasses, that's a big cause for sunburn and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, that's crazy, man. It's such a rabbit hole because I've heard it activates your pineal gland. And then I know numerous people firsthand, Dave, uh, Weiss is one of them, right? Where he says his eyesight improved by looking at the sun. I was actually talking to a rapper named King Los last night, and he was telling the same thing. He stargazes, and like his eyesight got way better. And numerous people attested at the same time 
Um, so like, like you get to the point where you adapt and it tripped me out. Cause I was thinking, well, you know, sometimes you look at the sun and you sneeze. It's like the sun is getting out, uh, the stuff in your body for you. Right. Like it's helping you trigger out all the toxicity to get it out. That I believe. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, yeah. I sneeze. I sneeze like a mofo. If I look at the sun, I really do. So getting all your toxins out. You could get to where what they're telling me is you can definitely get to where uh, after sun gazing for a while, uh, you become much more adapt adapted to being able to look at it. Yeah. Do you do a lot of grounding? It's something I need to do more of. Um, a lot of people talk about, you know, when you sun gaze, you want to get outside with your shoes off and uh, be grounded. I don't do that enough. So yeah, I don't do it enough either, but I do think there's definitely truth to that. Just uh, hyperlogically. I mean, that's 100%. why they put rubber in our souls. Yeah, that's why oh, yeah, the rubber on your soles. I mean, the electric field will go through your body when you're not grounded. So it's totally different electrically in your body when you're not grounded. Instead of, you know, if you're grounded, the 100 volts per meter will go up like a bell over your head and you're because you're grounded. And that's where the electric field kind of stays around you. But as soon as you get up on that rubber of the soles of our shoes, now that electric field is going right through your body. It's no longer belling up over the top of you because you're not grounded anymore. That's crazy. I'm yeah, trying bro. to find this video too because the other day I just saw a video. I passed by it and was like, oh, I got to go back and watch that. That was the sunglasses are a trick of the elite, but I didn't get to see it. So that's probably the other things they talk about is what you're talking about, right, Austin? That's crazy. If you saw that video, I would love for you to send that to me because I've been recently thinking about trying to look into this. Yeah, I I think it is pretty clearly a a trick because uh when you do look at the sun for a while uh, depending on what time it is that like you're looking at the sun and like where it is relative to you um your eyes will adapt to it to it and, and, and they tell you don't look at the sun so first step is we should look into <laughs> looking right at the sun, look at the sun? Yeah. <laughs> right during an eclipse they always tell you mm -hmm. don't don't you dare look at the sun so now it's like okay so what happens if I do? I'll just go stare at it. Uh, yeah, it's like literally good for you. Like it's, it's, I mean, I've, I've heard you'll go blind at certain times, but I guess like in the morning, like when the sun's rising or setting is when you're supposed to look at it. I, I don't know. I've never actually tried it because I'm afraid to go blind. I mean, I know it doesn't happen, but uh, I don't know. That's it's no, always drummed that's in me. That, yeah, you'll go blind. That's, you know, it's a right. trick. Bro. It's <laughs> they come with this crazy, scare you to death story. It's just a lie. There, there's a right. technique there's a te i wrote an article about this even on facebook about 12 years ago but there's a technique you don't look directly into the sun you look what you know what you would think is an inch above and you blink your eyes 20 times real fast then you look away then you look under right left <clears throat> so you don't want to be staring directly into it you look just above it so it's in your visual field but you're not directly in it yeah you and you keep blinking uh, it does all kinds of crazy stuff it it, it helps your digestion your immune not your immune system you don't have one but uh, all your hormonal functions well, <laughs> it does everything pfizer it's all through the eyes the, all in the retina yeah i looked the at whole pfizer. thing that's was grounding crazy. out too i think that's so important like i mean i'll go barefoot sometimes not so much in the winter time but like during the summer, I'll, I'll make it a point to go barefoot as much as possible because it just feels like, I don't know, you get you get let that static discharge out, man, when you ground out. And some people will go literally years, you know, with uh, never stepping foot on God's green grass earth, right, without shoes on, without rubber sole shoes on for literally like years at a time. And uh, I don't know, it just seems like it can't hurt, oh. right? Bro, what Los was saying was he's been doing it for a while now, and it gets to where what you see is that the sun is like black, and you just see a, uh, the ring around it. And you can just look at it. Wow. Can you guys hear me? Hey, Bob. Okay, I'm back. Um, I talked to Lindsay. Is his name Lindsay Harris? Who? And, and uh, he said that he would like to have a little bit longer time for – presentation plus he doesn't know how to use skype so we rescheduled okay so we are free to run with mr steve and everybody sweet are right, you talking about papa flurf that's his name yeah papa flurf's name is Lindsay harris i did not know that and and his uh channel is called flat earth philosophy yeah i'll show everybody here in one second that we were gonna have um he calls himself papa flurf and yeah mm -hmm. flat earth philosophy will bring up his channel and show you he's doing i mean i've watched a couple of his videos i think he's 
on the mark with a lot of stuff. And I say that because he believes in the bunt cake pan like I do. <laughs> so, he's a good guy. No, yep. uh, he sees the same idea and has kind of gone way further than even I have. So we'll come back to that. But we were going to have him on. But like Bob just said, he wants a little more time to present that. It'd be awesome to have him. Um, so I was just reading this part. And we can watch this video. I don't know. I, I haven't watched this video, so I haven't tested it to see if it's all okay. It's about eight, 17 minutes long. But this part here, talking about you need natural sunlight to help regulate your hormones. Your ancestors didn't wear sunglasses. Not that they didn't need accessories for their animal skin blouses, but it just wasn't a matter of necessity. They didn't need to block the natural light from their eyes. Sure, they would avoid the hot midday sun, but humans are not nocturnal creatures. So during the daylight is when we would really thrive. Yeah, I mean, I believe all that. I'm going to have to watch this video and I'll send it to you, Austin. And then I got to bring up your Globuster intro. Yeah, I, I like the I like the intro. That's good, Dawson. You seen right it? Along. Oh, I got to see it. Okay. We're oh, going to play cool, it. Yeah. Uh, there's a, I listened there's a great to it, yeah. documentary. If you guys want to, there's a good sun gazing documentary called Eat the Sun. I think it might have been Jay Widener. It's about 12 years old. Uh, all about the sun gazers. There was a famous guy. He was working out at Venice Beach. He was like this black guy. He was he wasn't huge like all the power lifters, but the guy could bench like 350. He was a Hulk Hogan and all those guys used to come down. And this guy claimed he got all his strength from the sun, and he was as strong as the guys, twice his size. Yeah, this guy was saying that like his discernment comes from the sun, and as you start to sun gaze and adapt, that you will see an incredible uh, heightened sense of discernment and the information that you need to know will actually just basically find its way to you uh, wow. and, and, and and that it just continues to improve. So it's very interesting because they told us, whatever you do, do not look at the sun. <laughs> I mean, it's it's crazy. Well, I do believe, though, I think if you went out and stared at the sun on your first day for like an hour, you probably would go blind. But that's just me. I just take everything slow. Oh, yeah. Like if you can tell that you obviously need to work your way through yes. it, you should be a psycho. Yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, all right. People we're just, and you, you know, you feel good in the summer when the sun's out. It's in, in Scandinavia where I live, they, uh, people have like, they call it winter depression, you know, when it gets dark and there's no light and they even have these fake lights they put on their desk to, to try to cure depression. So, I mean, people instinctively know that the so, sun is. So here's something. the question though. So like, has anybody actually ever gone blind from staring at the sun? I, I don't remember Galileo. that. Galileo. Galileo. I just remember. <laughs> yeah, you'll never oh, really? find. <laughs> Isn't that what they say? Galileo they say did. It can Galileo. burn your retinas if you look directly into it too long. But that's why the technique is not look right at it, but just over below into the side. But I don't know. Who Maybe knows? if you're masturbating too, then you go blind as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. You're never really done. That's true. Yeah. Junior, is that the actual story, or are you making a joke? <laughs> He's making a joke. What? No, Darren, Darren, with the Galileo. No, I think Galileo's <laughs> the reason he went blind is because he was looking at the sun through his telescope. That's what they say. Okay. And you know, he before he was well, jailed. The Galileo forbid... had hairy, hairy palms. I can't remember. <laughs> well, that guy actually exists. I mean, I mean, they use that guy for a lot of crucial lies. So. And they're all lies, and they even have to admit him now. I mean, he was. They talk about him like he was arrested. He was put under. He was put under house arrest and he lived in a castle and he was blind. So that's not a rest. He couldn't go anywhere yeah. anyway. <laughs> He's blind and lived in a castle. Why would he want to leave and go on the cobbly streets? I don't, I don't, I don't think that's true. Uh, but uh, story's because true. Because Galileo put in jail and uh, on a castle like jail and, and be uh, um, blind, things like that. Because at least when you read the uh, official books from church, uh, especially written by Jesuit. Remember, and this is a historic, uh, uh, historic fact, uh, Galileo was the director of the first university, the first pontificia university in, in Italy. So if the guy was blind uh, or, or was in jail in the castle, I don't know what type of uh, director could be. You know things like that. I don't know if uh, no, I don't think it's. I don't think it's completely real true. I think they use that to victimize and you know mm -hmm. trying to bring the uh, uh, that type How of how great hero science story. is. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. this is what happens when you fight against science. You know. Um, all right, let's listen to that song real quick. This is the without Austin's version or without his verse. Uh, the upcoming new Globusters intro. Let's check it out. Yeah. Nobody that I know of in my field uh, uses the so-called scientific method. 
In our field, it's by the seat of your pants. It's leaps of logic. It's guesswork. Oh, you stare without telling me. Oh, you stare without telling me. Yeah, he's Jaren, we're not hearing it. Oh, well. The You're gonna have to freestyle, Austin. <laughs> the audience can hear, but you guys can't. If I if I let you hear, you'll hear echo. Wait a so. minute, the audience is on isn't on. Sorry? Are we live? On the show? Yeah, we're not live, are we? Yeah. Why wouldn't we be? Yeah. Oh yeah. Because uh, I'm mine is showing live in thirty minutes. Oh, but bit of flat earth philosophy. Oh crap. <laughs> Wait, what? Never mind. Now it's showing live. I'm sorry. I had to You're refresh. You're the wrong show, man. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Okay. All right. So start it over again, guys. <laughs> you started over. So Panel we members. Too, you, well, I can't have you guys hear it because if I share, we shared sounds before the show and everybody heard an echo. So uh, really? that's what they said. Well, how about you want me to do it? Yeah, you do it. You play it. That works. All right. Hang on a second. Let me, that will work. Let me run over to it. Hang on just a second. No problem. Uh, yeah, sorry, I guess I so, just assume the position of. Yeah, like, so sorry, <laughs> sorry guys. Um, I didn't know we were live, and uh, it's my fault because I was feeling like crap this morning, and I didn't think I was going to make it, so I'm feeling better now. But uh, we well, didn't see. know what time so, it was. Yeah, so let's go. We should smoke crack after the show. That's what I think. Yeah, totally, totally. Before. Okay, so share screen. Are you sharing desktop okay. with sound? Close this. Start sharing. Share to Skype. And I think I put it on the desktop. Hang on. Okay. Oh, we see your motorcycle. You see my motorcycle? Excellent. Excellent. Um, you got you gotten to drive that much? Um, yeah. Like yeah, nice. I ride it all the time. I've never been on one. Uh, and probably never will. Okay. Oops. Hang on a second. God, I saved it to the desktop. Where the hell did it go? Uh, it's an MP3. It's scarier though here in South Carolina, isn't it, Bob? Why is yeah, it scarier than bit. Colorado? Uh, roads are narrower. Well, the altitude. Well, in the altitude, I remember the first time you came back from riding it down here. You were like, "Man, I had no idea that thing was that fast." Because <laughs> as you go up in altitude, the uh, you know the pressure is less, so you don't get as much air intake into the engine. But down here, he got on it and he's. He said, I never knew. I had no clue it was that fast. Space Busters, we got a question for you. Somebody asking if you are uh, Danish. Your accent sounds American. Yeah, no, uh, I, I'm American. I'm from Chicago. Uh, Ross is English, but we live in Copenhagen. All right. We only live here. Um, somebody said, it would have been funny if Bob had a hot mic moment and said something crazy. He's only done that on one show, and I saved him. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Boy, I almost, I almost messed up bad. <laughs> Luckily, I knew it was happening, and uh, somehow, I don't remember how he saved him, but I muted him or something. Um, the show is live, but on. chat is pre-recorded. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that does not make okay. any sense. Okay, so let's see if this does it. Okay. Yeah, I hear it. Do you? In a world productions. Yes. yes. I hear something. It's a little quiet, but we can hear it. Nobody that I know of in my field under, uh, uses the so-called scientific method. In our field, it's by the seat of your pants. It's leaps of logic. It's guesswork. And and then they call me the liar. I mean, it's it's absolutely unbelievable the pathetic, pathetic techniques that they have to use to prove their heliocentric model.
I love that. And I'm going to get yeah, that's awesome, to man. Man. So yeah. she's saying bye bye to the Moon Rover. And yeah, I love that. The course is going to be awesome. I didn't get a chance to memorize it already, but can't wait to. And then yeah. uh, Austin's still got his verse to go. We should we should totally jam sometime, Austin. What do you what do you do? Uh Morgan, you play an instrument? Oh yeah. Yeah, I I play the guitar a little. Oh yeah, that's right. I've seen, that? play, no, I've seen him play guitar. <laughs> I didn't know what I was thinking. I wanted him to play the, uh, the you know banjo or something. Um, all right, <laughs> <laughs> let me. Uh, I want to show you Papa Flurf's channel real quick. All right, yeah, I'm gonna uh, stop file sharing or screen sharing. I'm out. Okay, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna put this over here. And it's it, the channel name is Flatter Philosophy. Yes, I believe it so. is. Yes. Let me um, put this over here real quick, and we'll get it back. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, anybody else have anything new that they had happen this week they want to talk about while I search for this? What is going on here? Hmm, there we go. Flat Earth Philosophy. And, uh, yeah, he's got a good video about the Southern... He, he has the Southern Stars figured out, uh, according to him. And, like I said, he's very smart, so it's a little bit um, tough to follow along sometimes. Let me see if I can find one here that we want to watch. Let's go with the this one. There we go. All right, so he's got um, where's the Southern Stars one? Oh, here we go, Bump Kick Pan. Woo! No, um, so yeah, I mean, I've he, been watching this guy for a while, and he's, I think he's got a lot of it real close, if me too. not right on, you know. And then let me find a yeah, better one where he's got some of this stuff. With the, yeah, really bright. We'll just do a little bit just here, and then what did he say, Bob? You guys gonna do it next week, or are we just we don't know yet. About when Welcome he wanted to, to come flat on. Earth philosophy, everyone. Um, oops. Everything here is about flat earth. Go ahead. Did you guys decide when you were going to reschedule, or you just said we we're going to reschedule? Um, are you there? Yep, oh, I lost Bob. We'll get him back. I didn't know if he said he was going to. Oh, but can you hear me now? Oh, yes. Did you? Uh... Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm having a problem with my mute button. I'm on a different set of headphones. Um, it, we are going to try and schedule for next week okay, um, cool. if that works, but he's got a move date coming up, so we may have to do that. But um, yeah, he he does things differently. He follows the – he does it a lot like Santos Bonacci does, um, There's but there's some definite detours away from that. But uh, he, he definitely and, – and he also carries along with uh, – uh, what's the black dude? Ah, uh, I can't remember the black dude's name. Martin Kenny. Does the, Martin Kenny. That's right. Um, he does a lot of stuff like that with the symbology. And I told him, I said, look, you know, I'm, I've been working on the electrical model of this for a long time. And, you know, we have been presenting some pretty powerful stuff. And by the way, the, the video I released yesterday from don't spare the truth has been getting rave reviews from everybody. Um, because people are now starting to understand it's like, I'm not proposing a model what I'm talking about is how the earth is. And the video that I put out yesterday, it's so funny because it's all these astrophysicists saying, well, we just don't know where that electricity is coming from. We can't figure it out. Maybe it's coming. It's, it's absolutely so well done. If you haven't seen it, I posted it yesterday. I see it. I see it. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful. And of course it ties in what we are calling gravity, that downward, that downward, uh, you know, the cosmic radiation, bias. the X-rays, uh, yep. a lot of and things. And I'm going to win you mm -hmm. over on that one of these days, Eero, because because I am. You know, we can demonstrate that it actually works that way. No, I think Eero's um, in the same yeah. same boat as a lot. I think we're all arguing the same thing. You know, that there is a downward force, that there is a downward uh, bias, and what it causes just isn't that? What the mainstream says it is correct. <laughs> right, it's certainly not. Uh, uh, At least mass there is like, mass. like an Earth bias. Yes. Right, which is kind of what if we said, right? We don't right? want to define the directions, you know. It's right, but it Earth, does not but... exist outside of the Earth. It absolutely does not exist outside of the Earth. No. This is this is innate to this this Gaussian field that we are inside with the capacitor plates above and below us um, that literally pushes down. So gravity is not a pulling force at all. It's actually a pushing force. So everything is See? pushing, not pulling. Don't stare at the sun. Stare at the sun. Pulling force, pushing force. It's always the opposite. Right. Um <laughs> And so this is, uh, yeah, he does a good job here. We, I'm not going to play because the guys on the panel won't hear it. But 
here he's talking about motion to the thing. Down here. so here he's talking about if you can kind of see right behind his shirt here how he's got these domes same kind of idea of the personal atmospheric dome but you'll notice here this is the north pole and this is what i've been trying to say without drawing breasts but i've been trying to say that it's a bunt cake pan so you can kind of see you have this kind of dome then the next dome and this is would be your antarctica and this would be your antarctica so picture a now he's well, showing like that. That's what I'm talking about. You are about. sharing with us the image, uh, Jenna. Oh what? Oh, I, I didn't was, share. I back. was just going to say real quick uh, that whole now. you know the dielectric plane of inertia explains gravity or what goes up must come down so perfectly. And you know the globe Earth proponents claim that uh, gravity is exclusive to a globe, which is just absolutely absurd. And of, you know of course the phenomenon of what goes up must come down works so much better on a motionless dielectric inertial plane. You guys can see it now, Iru, or no? Yeah. Now, yes. Okay, just now showing. Now we are seeing it. So he's showing that the, this, uh, this is not a bunk cake pan. This is a piece of, I don't know, air conditioning vent or whatever. But he's kind of showing that the, you know, the earth would be in the middle of that. And that's the way it seems to propagate light. And then when you look at the, and I've shown it many times before, look at the Wikipedia for the stratosphere. The stratosphere says, that it's at its highest at the equator at 66,000 feet. Then at the mid-latitude, so at the tropics, it's 33,000 feet. And then at the poles, it's like 23,000 feet. So when I saw that, I'm like, okay, well, that's, the, you know, everything underneath that is the weather that we deal with that would cause refraction, things like that. So it's shaped like this. Let me put over my mouse over here. So it's shaped like this, meaning that the equator, the sky is the highest, Mid latitudes, it's the medium, and then at the poles, it's the lowest. And that would answer a lot of the questions of why we don't see light or do see light uh, sometimes in the north. And then, you know, why it could propagate around the south too. It kind of creates a, a tunnel. He kind of has it drawn here. He talks about how the southern stars, I'm wondering where his video of the southern stars is, because he shows. Um, so, anyway, I'm excited to talk to him because I try to follow. Where's the Southern Stars one? Um, I try to follow. It's a little bit difficult, but uh, a lot of people are starting to pay attention. His numbers are going up. You see here he was in the hundreds, and then he went to um, you know, he's starting to get up into the thousands here. Uh, where yeah, is he? He gets a lot. He gets like he's really sort of really fleshing out what we've been trying to describe for so long. You know, with the counter rotation in the south. Yeah. What's the name like of the of channel? Magnetic Flat Earth uh, uh, Philosophy. Philosophy. But, you know, the thing is with him, I mean, like I said, he's doing this from a completely different perspective. I mean, it is not on a technical level at all. He is, you know, like I said, he's he's putting together those interesting word matches, word memes type stuff. Right. And he does do that. a lot of them are going, ah, that's pretty interesting. Others I'm saying, eh, I don't know, not so much. But, um, you know, I really think that with the combination of with you know what we're doing what he's doing what Martin Kennedy's doing and other people are doing we can we can put this together i mean i'm almost certain that that we can put together a model right now and that's you know one of the things that i'm going to be doing uh, in the coming weeks of globusters is just you know each each week on the show i am going to be presenting um you know a different aspect of the flat earth model and i'm going to try it and do it from a perspective of not what we think, but what we actually know about it, you know, and I think that's just a lot better way to do it. And uh, don't spare the truth. Um, I think he's going to be really happy to help me out on that. He was thrilled to see that I did those, um, you know, presentations on the Gaussian filters and also Zach's work on it, too. Zach did some fabulous videos. And uh, I mean, I think our biggest problem has been is, you know, I don't do graphics and I have a hard time expressing things. Same with Cami, right? So we definitely need people that can do graphics. Um, uh, Lindsay, who is the you know Papa Smurf guy that that's on uh, Flat Earth Philosophy, he uses a whiteboard, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you know we're we're, we're kind of like the old style, but you know it gets the job done. But there's nothing quite like having the 21st century graphics to drive home a point on what's going on. And I think um, Karen B is you know kind of in the midst of working on applying this electrical model to you know the toroid field and the you know the base of the flat earth model and then we can build from there and then i what i want to do after that is build optically so that we can explain the southern star rotation and yes i mean is he explaining it, it, it by it's a reflection like this that's insane if it's not saying it's insane i i don't know why i have not thought of that that's weird to me i'm just like thinking like because he just showed when he put his hand in the middle there that it blocks it. But I don't know if that's what he's talking about. I haven't watched this video. I'm going to watch it after. 
Yeah, he well, like I said, his take on this is very different. And that's why I say I wouldn't you know, you guys, when you watch his work, don't be so quick to dismiss it, because like I've said a million times, it only takes somebody to walk in and make a presentation. And the rest of us are slapping our hands against our forehead going, holy crap, why didn't we see that in the first place? I agree. And I think that he's got a lot of aspects in that. And, you know, I think a lot of people can really get a lot out of it. But we really need to come together as a community, and we all have these ideas. And, uh, you know, screw what the Globers think. I don't give a crap what they think. I really don't. Um, they can sit there and say – they can sit there and quote their their baller th- model and, you know, philosophy all day long. It's irrelevant because we're not on a ball earth. So, you know, right. we shouldn't care what they think. It's like how are they going to uh, prove that we spin and fly through space at, you know, millions of miles per hour? They're not. They're not. So either we're going to believe men and just go through our lives trusting them. Or we're going to suss this stuff out ourselves. And, yeah, if people are going to hate for people making mistakes or whatever. Nobody's claiming they know all the answers and that it's 100%. We're just um, offering ideas. And this, I want to I want to hear it. I want to check it out. So, And he explains things really well. Um, is this what you meant, Zach, by he does stuff with the magnetics? Like when he does it with the TV showing the, uh, yeah. the patterns? Yeah, he, and, and he gets hands-on with stuff. It's not – I mean, it's mostly the whiteboard. Right through his presentations, but he does play around a little bit, and he, and he does like to build little models and stuff. So yeah, I mean, I'd love to test some of his stuff. You know, it looks a lot really like Santos to, but... Bona- looks like Santos Bonacci yeah. and Walter Russell combined. I yeah. haven't seen it either, but he's he's doing a lot of dielectric plane. It looks very interesting. Yeah, especially when you talk about. I mean, this he's t- he has here the real image of the flat Earth for seen from above. This is kind of what I picture having to happen with a atmosphere here that kind of shapes our view. And then he shows that the magnetics seem to, uh, you know, reverse there, which we have, this is the path of the sun and moon, obviously. Then this, I've always wondered about the sun and the pyramid, the way they've got the eye of, of Providence um, or the, the capstone, the pyramid. I've always thought there's something to do with the earth there, but not, you know, thought about is could the earth be a pyramid? Is it, but I think it's referring to the sun and it's light, right? So kind of like he's got up here. And then um, even more than that, I mean, there's lots of different, the Freemasonic uh, logo or whatever you want to call it. What do they call it? Is it a logo? Yeah, the square, square and compass um, is weird because I've laid that down before. And it's, if you're standing, let's say you're standing at the equator and you look out at where the sun rises throughout the year, right? So let's say we're standing at the equator, we're looking east and we're watching where the sun rises and we mark our furthest point left and we mark our furthest point right. So the first point left would be where it rises at the height of summer, and the farthest on the right would be where it rises at the height of of winter. And if you take those two angles and you lay a, a square and compass on it, that's what the compass is pointing to. So the the bottom angle of the Masonic symbol is the exact same distance as the maximum sunrise and sunset for any person on Earth. So just little things like that when you realize that you can. And then I mean, what is their what is their saying on the level, right? What do you think they're saying that for? And what what's the background of this guy? I don't know. Uh, anybody uh, know that much? Um, um, he uh, he is. I don't know. Actually, I don't know what he does. Um, I just I I caught on to him actually well over a year ago. Um, somebody sent me some some information on him, and um, you know me, I'm always looking for people that think outside of the box. Well, this guy no, definitely course, thinks of outside of the box. <laughs> but he's not and, an engineer, you know, mathematician or, or historian or... Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know. Just I don't describe know him as more of a free thinker. Of course, we'll find out okay. more about him at that Perfect. point. And, you know, it's unfortunate that he couldn't be on here today, but uh, we didn't didn't quite make the connection and it was a little bit late, you know, when I finally got a hold of him. So that was my bad, but uh, we'll, we'll give him a good build up on this. And, you know, like I said, I think that, that, you know, and I agree, uh, Jaron, with the, because you've, you've said several times before about how you think it is a kind of like a bun cake type of thing. And I agree with that. However, I think that that structure is coming to us from the black sun underneath. Which it could and, be. And then that would create that kind of, uh, it's almost like pulling it towards the center, right? Yeah, and and I and guys, I still think the black sun is real. I mean, we have come across something in Chris Van Maitre. He's been super busy, but you know, at some point, if if I don't get a hold of a solar telescope to actually duplicate this, maybe we'll crowd crowdfund one or something. But what I really want to do is 
start going around and getting pictures of that and try to break down why is it that the the black sun that we're seeing the second sun in that telescope why is it that the only way that we can affect that is with a polarizing filter that is not normal guys that is not the way things work there's only one one way that a reflection can cause that to happen and it has to be coming coming in at a very specific angle and those angles that we got it at ain't it so you know there's still a big mystery to be had there and you know with that that video that i showed week with the you know the freemason guy that was drawing his picture um which again if you look at that in kind of the same context that Jaron is, um, you can look at that and say, all right, well, I can see where, you know, we're getting this, this kind of bunt cake type of thing because there is an exchange of energy or light, I should say, that's going up through the center of the North Pole. And, you know, I, I really think that we are so close to our answers, guys. And that's why I think things are going so crazy right now. I really do. But uh, I, I'm very optimistic about this. Yeah, it's uh, it's exciting. It kind of reminds me of some times before where, oops, what happened? Um, well, I was just going to say, eventually people are just going to accept it as an obvious fact, right? I mean, we're going through all those stages where first they they deny it vehemently and they they fight you on it, and you know through the through the different colors of that spectrum, and then you wind up with people just accepting it as obvious truth, which I mean, it clearly is. That'd be nice. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And so, any, anybody um, going after Professor Dave and uh, going after Simon and Dan and those guys are friends of mine. <laughs> Tell you how much <laughs> right now. Uh, you know, I get, I get, an, you know, every other day people will pass, will paste the uh, Professor Dave debunks Globusters. You, you know, the one that's got like ten <sighs> gazillion views on it. Yes, of course. And you know, they're always saying thank me later and stuff. And you know, I, it makes me sick to honestly even look at that guy. But one of these days, I think I really want to go back and just address it point by point and, and explain what a complete idiot he is. But I think that, you know, this will help us a lot if we have a little bit more of our model intact and, you know, explain that we are not dealing with globe earth, with globe earth concepts. Um, and in fact, you know, I think a lot of people understand that Albert Einstein was put in the game basically to derail classical physics. Because we were doing just fine with classical physics with, with people like uh, uh, James Clerk Maxwell and, and you know, all the, the heavy hitters, heavy side. Um, all of those people, you know, these people were actually able to uh, have a very working and manipulable model, you know, for the ether and how everything worked. And then, you know, Einstein comes in with all these ridiculous ridiculous assertions about, well, you can't, you know, everything's a frame of reference. You can't really tell what's moving because everything's in its frame of reference. And now the ballers, it's funny, you can ask the ballers a simple question like, well, does the sun move? And right. they're like, you know, as compared to what? Um, and of course, I, my reply to that would be as compared to where it was the minute before, has yeah. it moved? You can't ask that question and in course, physics. Yeah, the answer is, of course, of course it has, right? But they're going to try and obfuscate all this bullshit by saying, no, um, no, uh, it, it moves in contrast to everything else, which is like, no, duh. But that doesn't that doesn't give you, you know, carte blanche to just deny um, solar motion altogether and, and promote your geocentric or not your heliocentric model, right? Um, where everything is going around the sun, because even even mainstream physics is declaring that the sun is moving at you know 67,000 miles an hour. It's moving at 500 or 480,000 miles an hour, and it's also moving at uh, 1.2 or 1.3 million miles per hour, all in different directions. But they don't ever want to admit admit any of that because what it will say then is that. When we look, when we analyze these vector, these vector sums of motion that we should be able to feel, absolutely should be able to feel them. Actually, frankly, they should destroy the earth. But, but even if our mm -hmm. vestibular senses were too, um, you know, weak to sense these motions, our equipment certainly is not. Our measuring equipment, our accelerometers, 
I mean, the accelerometer inside of a phone is so incredibly sensitive, it's, it's unreal. And we're not even talking lab quality stuff, right? But have the ballers ever, ever, ever one time come out and said, okay, here we are. We're at perihelion. We're going through aphelion. Bada bing, look at this. Look at the vector. Look at the vector sums change. Look at the Newtons apply, right? Have they oh, ever done that? The, the no. thing the thing that's so obvious about it is that the, the Globers even concede that the world is a fixed frame of reference. It doesn't behave as a body in motion, as all bodies in motion do, according to the laws of physics. It behaves as a fixed frame of reference, and they agree with that statement. But of course, Einstein is there to say, and Einsteinian physics is nothing more than the fantastical imaginings of a man not based on any experiment, but based on just thought Thoughts, experiment, yeah. which is an oxymoron, right? Does and somebody so, have a TV on? Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just crazy. I just hear TV in the background. Somebody's got a TV on. Um, yeah. Oh, that might be might be me. Sorry. That's right. Bob, I just wanted to point this out that it's funny because people say, based on me getting 10,000 views per video and having 150,000 subscribers, that I must have bought them. But that makes a lot of sense, yeah. Went out and bought the oh, subscribers. I know. But anyway, it's funny when you look at Professor Dave. So let's just take my numbers. If it's 150K, you know, 10% of that would be 15K. So let's say I'm only getting half those views. So I'm only getting 5% of my subs views. Okay, so that's 5%. Now, if you look at him, he's getting 13,000, 9,500, 8,000, 3,000. But look at his subs. His subs is 1.8 million. Let's pretend that he had 1.5 million, just so we can compare that with the 150,000 I have. Then that means that he should be getting, if he got 10%, it'd be 150,000 views per. If he's getting what I'm getting, 5%, he should be getting 75,000 views per. He's not getting 75,000. He's getting three, four, well, five, and eight. Let's not forget that YouTube isn't blackballing the likes of Professor Dave. Right. That's what I'm just going to get at, too. Really get uh, special treatment, he's, not being, so. he's not being shadow banned. And it's so, so half of 75K right. would be 36K. That'd be 2.5%. He's not getting that. He's not even getting 18K, which would be one, he's getting 1%. 1% percent of his subs views. Uh, that just tells you. I mean, I think he got all of his subs from us. Yeah. I think when he debunks his, <laughs> didn't that video have like 5 million views? Uh, yeah, it's got four or five, six million views. Of course, they all came from us because the Globusters, I mean, we were, you know, for the longest time in 2015, 2016, and 2017, we were routinely running over 2,000 live. Um, and then when we went over to DLive at that point, without even without even promoting it, um, we were accumulating over 2,000 live, which tells us that YouTube was really, really dialing back our numbers. Yeah, and I was talking about that on my show the other day. I realized that I think we as viewers, if you like a show, please remember to share it outside of our circles. Because you have to remember, we are throttled down to where we're just speaking to the choir. Okay, Globusters will never grow in subscribers if nobody shares the show because everyone who sees it already knows about it and watches it. And I know I've sat before and watched shows and been like, man, this show doesn't really grow in numbers. I wonder why. I just kind of left it at that. Well, just recently I realized, well, it's because of me. If I'm watching a show and I think it's well, good, why you, am I not sharing? YouTube, even so much as came out and said, if people are talking about flat Earth, we're going to make sure that people don't find their content. I mean, they have come out and literally said that much. Right. So that so, leaves it to no people. Surprise. People need to get out and tell others about the show or reach out to people in your town or to make little business cards that have 10 channels on it or 20 channels on it. Otherwise, it's it'll never grow. And think of how easy it is to grow if you eat tricks out of a bathtub or if you're Logan Paul, right? They just, they'll just they just push you to everybody's um, recommended. It's just like they push. I'm surprised all these debunking mm -hmm. videos don't have 10, 20, 30 million views because they're all you get when you search anything. I mean, look at this. So he came out with a couple of Flat Earth videos and you know, 1.1 1 .1 million, 782,000, 487,000. So the Flat Earth topic, obviously, and debunking it is very important to people. <laughs> and they're dying and looking for... Uh, that content and they can't find flat earth content because if you type but in, they won't the funny thing is they won't let you see the dislikes anymore i didn't i just did yeah youtube turned off where you can't see dislikes because they know all your people are there disliking the hell out of that stuff yeah so that's but why it's so off. true how though. many likes like and dislikes does that guy's video have i bet he's getting trolled like someone... crazy by flat earthers yeah, and if you the know, regular person just goes and searches for flat earth geez. content on the big name, you know, the big YouTube sites and such, all they're going to find is the debunk videos. They're not going to find good content. 
So yeah, of course, those numbers are inflated for them. They're getting all the flat earth search term traffic. Right. Where the actual flat earth creators, the content creators that are making good flat earth content are blackballed by YouTube. So, I mean, it, it's a clusterfuck, man. I'll, I'll be glad to see it. Yeah, if, remember, if you uh, like you used to search like YouTube, that is. <laughs> flat earth atmosphere or something, if you wanted to see a Rob Skiba video, it doesn't matter what word you put after flat earth, you're still going to get the same thing, the same debunking videos yeah. that we just saw. Uh, and look, he has 9 million views now, Bob. That's nine, crazy. Nine now, million. now the interesting thing is, is, if you take a look at my screen share that I'm sharing, Jaron. Oh, let me go. Over I that. don't know. You, you can you can share it to the public if you want. They can, they can see how much incredible money we make here. Nine point one. Um, but but we are okay. gaining an, an average and always have gained somehow anywhere between six and um anywhere be excuse me between five and seven hundred uh, new users a month. Right. You can see right now. Uh, we're at 67303. We've added 580 users in the last 28 days. And this is consistent. Uh, we are always adding hundreds and hundreds of users every single month. And yet our view, our views aren't going up. And, of course, you can see we're just killing it here, guys. Here, look how much we're making. Well, but let's out. be honest. Yeah. That's split six <laughs> ways. So, I mean, if we were making 124, it'd be great. But, no, it's split. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's $18 yeah, a piece. That's uh, it's pretty nice. That's a lot of crack, boys. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I get one hit a month. It's pretty good. Yeah. But the point mm -hmm. is, is that even though, and you, you were stuck at like 120 something five for the forever. Yeah. 150 for a while. Oh, and, dude, uh, I've been, I've been stuck at 30,000 subscribers on YouTube for like five years. Like not even kidding. Like I've been stuck there for so long. So I think it has a lot to do with Crazy. sharing it because it's the only way it can grow yes. exponentially. Yep. You know. And not just that, but uh, in, in the case of Globbuster, for example, we make only one show at the week or two at week mm -hmm. uh, per week, and that is also something that YouTube don't like it. Uh, they want to you expand, spend more more time in, in trying to upload videos every day, uh, things like that. And if you do the, if you don't do that. Uh, I'll, the only thing that you left is to trying to spread the word via Telegram groups, Facebook bro groups, uh, things like that. Uh, it's, it's the only can make cross platforms, uh, invite people, uh, you know, that, that that kind of stuff. I mean, at least for me, it works much better than just uh, uploading uh, videos. But you need to follow some rules of, of uh, you know, uh, social network marketing. If you want to be promoted, um, that it's not well, like going Facebook, to Facebook's no friendlier for flat earthers either. Like I have, I don't know, three or 4,000 Facebook friends and hundreds of followers on Facebook. But if I share a video on there, it'll get like six views or seven views. Yeah, or something. No, you need to go, ridiculous. for example, in, in my case, I am subscribed like a 12, uh, Facebook group of flat earth in Spanish, in English, Italian and uh, mm -hmm. uh french so every time that i create a video i just upload in those 12 uh, groups and there mm -hmm. are groups for for example groups with uh, 60k uh, 100k 12k people following that group not for flat earth but for conspiracy quote-unquote topics so at least mm -hmm. you, you start like fishing one or two or ten new uh users or subscriber or, or people interested in, in this kind of topic. And that is the only thing there. We are not people that can, you know, buy uh, a marketing group to pro I, I, I remember even I, I try uh, like two years ago to pay on Google ads and, and promote my web page and things or video because you have the choice in, the, in YouTube, you have a choice to uh, promote the video paying publicity and advertising and that even doesn't work for me i mean it's crazy but uh, it, it works much better when you go with uh for telegram groups or facebook group and you're trying to you know paste uh, copy and paste your link and and leave the people to decide if you like if they like the the topic or not ross and i went over to bitch you and We've got uh, 19,000 subs there, but our videos get 80,000 to 350,000. That's not even with all the mirrors. We're, we're getting an average of a half a million to three quarter of a million view when you add all the mirrors. 
And on YouTube, I think we've, we're like you, Austin. We've been stuck at about 29,000 forever. <laughs> and only like 4,000 people even see our our ads. So we went over to Odyssey and bit you. And we, we get 10 times the views than we even have subs. Whereas YouTube, nobody's even seeing it. It's, def, it's clearly controlled oh, on man. YouTube. Because think how easy it would be if you're YouTube and you have recommended feeds and you can put that in front of, say, 50 million Americans get on YouTube, even if we say once a week. So they're there, and if you push that video to them, I mean, well, if everyone clicked on it, there'd be 50 million views. So you only need a very, very tiny percentage of people to click on the recommended video that they've put on you, and that's when you start getting 100,000, 200,000, 500,000 million views. And then when those people share it, of course, sharing on large numbers is exponential, right? So if you've got those 50 people well, share it, with 50 people, they there, know, there was know, a, blows up. The, yeah, I mean, there was a point in time when YouTube, you could post a video on there, even with limited subscribers, and get hundreds of thousands of views on it pretty quickly. And that that abruptly changed. Man, it was like, I, I want to say January of 2017 or right around thereabouts, and it just, it just fell off a cliff, man. It, it was deliberately done. I mean, YouTube deliberately did this in order to cover up flat Earth and save face for NASA and continue the, you know, NASA... Ponzi scheme or whatever the hell it is, money yeah. laundering, whatever the hell it is. And I don't think do. it's that difficult to do either. I mean, I really think if you're YouTube, what you could do is have a certain number, like let's say 25,000 subs. So as soon as somebody hits that many subs, you just have a real human look at the channel, go through the, you know, the last 20 videos and just make a yes or no decision. Do we want to promote this person? So if you're talking, if you're a podcast or you're talking about truth or you're talking about politics, they're probably not going to push you. If you're a person eating tricks out of a bathtub or doing little dances or, you know, you're Logan Paul, those are the people that they flip the switch on. And then those people start showing up and everybody's recommended. And then what they've obviously done recently is put all any debunking video about flat earth gets pushed into people's feeds. So the second you watch a flat earth video, the next one that comes up is one of the debunking ones, which is why we're seeing those numbers uh, in the millions for those videos. And of course, not ours anymore. Uh, I don't but that's your face because remember 2019 in the uh, House of Representatives uh, in the United States with Mrs. Down telling that to the actual, I don't know, Congresses or whatever, that uh, we're going to promote, uh, we are not longer to promote lower quality content and we are start, uh, going to start putting a box saying, no, the earth is not flat. And you remember that? Yeah. Yep. So there you have it. From that starting point, all flat earth topics went down completely. Yeah. And I mean, I noticed when I realized, I was like, well, it's funny because each show will say like, you know, if you want to sub, do this and hit the subscribe button. And I'm realizing that's not for us. The people who should be telling people to subscribe to their channel are the people who get pushed into other people's feeds. Why would I ever tell anybody to subscribe to me? Everybody watching is subscribed. <laughs> you know, if there's nobody not subscribed who's watching me, how would they be watching? How did they get there? So um, it's just funny that we, we do that. We tell people to go to Rockfin and here's how you do it. Well, everybody knows because there are people that watch us. We're not talking to anybody new. There's nobody new here today unless somebody shared this show outside of the normal circles, right? So that's what I think we need to start doing. I brought that up because there's that rapper, Tom McDonald. A lot of people have issues or say that he's controlled. I don't think so. I think he's just... Uh, Somebody who speaks truth, not all truth. He's baby truther, okay. But I still think it's information that I want everybody to hear. And I was watching, he has 3 million subs, which is good. But I was like, I'm surprised he doesn't have more. And then it hit me, well, it's because nobody shares his stuff. Because I was telling a story about, I have a buddy who I've been trying to push, you know, into flat earth or kind of explain things to him. And he's like, eh, eh, whatever. He just doesn't really seem awake. Well, uh, about a year ago, maybe it was, or maybe six months ago, I sent him a video by Tom McDonald. I was like, do you watch this guy? He's like, no, but I knew he liked rap, and he wa and he like called me back, like, dude, what the hell? This guy's awesome. I was like, I know. So now he's the one that texts me every time Tom comes out with a new song, and my friend is totally awake now to like everything. He's like, um, almost ultra awake, and I'm like, oh, it's because of. And then I was reading the comments on Tom McDonald's video, and there's all kinds of middle aged guys, thirty to sixty, saying the same. I never liked rap. I used to listen to rock, and now this guy's you know m music speaks to me, and and I'm like, you know what? If people shared it, I think that um, it would be a great thing. I just don't think, and I, maybe I'm just talking about myself. I don't ever share it besides with my buddy. I'm like, I need to share things more because that's the only way, like if my buddy, because Tom McDonald is somebody who's clearly throttled as well. So meaning when he puts out a video, it's not going to show up in anybody's recommended. The only people who watch him are people who know about him. So when I told my buddy, 
he would have never seen Tom McDonald show up on his YouTube until he goes to YouTube and types in Tom McDonald. Then now he sees it. Now he can subscribe. Now he can watch those videos. But there's no kind of growth beyond that because we're not able to talk to people or we're not talking to people outside of these circles. So anyway, it's just something I think think about if you like a show, uh, please share it because it's kind of disheartening for some of us, like with my Jaronism show. I think it's a good show. And when you just see the numbers just kind of sit there and they're always the same, you're like, man, maybe nobody likes it. But then it hit me like, well, that's not true. Everybody who watches it likes it because my numbers aren't dropping, but they're not growing because nobody's sharing the show. Now, I get it. It's not a show you might feel comfortable sharing on Facebook or something like that. But um, if it ever is, or it's a good episode that you think is okay to share, or there's another video of mine to share, please do. And that goes for anything that you like. So enough, enough of that. Um, all right. Let's see here. Eerie, you said you had something to share? I have a observation yeah, or something? Not, yes, an, an observation. Yes. Okay, yes, go ahead. Let's if do it. you like it. Okay, let me just. I love uh, okay, let me go again to YouTube because. Yes, we definitely. Share Conspiracy on Music Guru YouTube. as well. That's a great point. Uh, what? Sorry. What? Share. No, I was About saying somebody guru? said to share Conspiracy Music Guru, and I totally agree. Ah, okay, uh, yeah. Need to get his uh, stuff out there a little bit more, too. All right, I have here the uh, the observation. Okay, where you're on okay. the screen, we're good. Okay, a, we a are Pandora? presenting right a, now. A planadora. A planadora is like uh, ooh, uh, it's like saying um, these uh, special machines to make the terrain flat. Uh, you know, this with a big cylinder passing over the. The, the soil, the ground, and flatter the ground. You know, it's a construction machine. I don't know how to to say in uh, in English. That is the name of the channel. It's people from Argentina. Uh, they started following me like two years ago, something like that, one year ago. And they start making observation. Their YouTube channel is exactly this one, Aplanadora6371. And they have a few, quite a few uh, observations. They are not uh, doing any other, um, uh, they don't cover any story, uh, historic facts or religious facts or, you know, uh, things like that. It's just empirical observation using uh, their own camera and their own equipment. And they, you know, go to certain points in Argentina. They have friends in Spain and they make observation. They present the distances, the math behind it, and you decide for yourself. But this one is particularly really interested, interesting because the observation this time is for 180 kilometers, uh, which is in miles is... Uh, something around 110 miles at the height of of uh, only one meter and one meter and six uh, 60 wow. centimeter. This is the point. It's uh, be in... super clear. Super yes, clear. of course, of course, is to a uh, mountain, but the mountain. You know, it's uh, only 2,000 meters, and the observation, it's not observation. The calculation, the, the numbers behind is that at least uh, 400 meters must be high. Uh, I mean, it, it, it left 400 meters to the mountain to reach the possibility of the observation just in the tip of the mountain, not even the entire mountain. This is the the observation that the, these guys uh, did. Is uh, in Gibraltar. Um, I don't know how you call this stretch. Uh, stretch. I don't know how you, how you name this type of uh, uh, geological formation. But this is the observation. This is where they took that observation. Uh, this is the height uh, in terms of the observer it's only one meter and, and 60 centimeters and the range uh it's 180 kilometers of course as you already started uh, you know imagine um there is 
a little bit of refraction in the atmosphere. We're going to have some lower uh, mirage because the day, the condition of the atmospheric, things like that. But this is the direct observation. And when you go to the videos, I, I going to, uh, well, they all, they also use uh, the panoramic uh, generator. I don't know if that is the name in English. Uh, I believe you, Sheran, know this app? Uh, yeah. Okay. Of course, they use refraction, standard refraction, quote unquote. Oh, we got to. And, Mick, Mick West says and, we have to. Yeah, and, and, and they they use that standard refraction to interpret it that the some distances object must be rise up to the horizon line. Of course, they, they, they make that trick. This is just a panoramic, um, digital panoramic constructor. Uh, this is not, the, they are not going to, pres uh, to present you any real picture, nothing like that. It's just for orientation purposes, something like uh, you can compare with your picture, things like that. But in this case, when they start doing the, um, they, they do the, pan the digital panoramic, panorama, sorry, uh, for, with the standard refraction that they, the, the, the software put initially and which is in this case is 0 0.16 and then they do the same thing without the refraction and in both cases uh, you couldn't see uh, what they see in the in the video uh, let me just skip a little forward to the video itself they use the lighthouse uh, as a reference in the observation it's a little bit in the sunset and this uh, you're gonna see here this they, they start of course this is the horizon line down here is the mirage but what you're gonna see let me just skip forward this is the uh the observation that they did that they did and as long as the video goes because they start presenting the altitude, the uh, you know the hidden part of the. This is this gray area. Gray area must be hidden. And here you can clearly see the 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 mountain. So it's a little bit of <laughs> you know the, that this is not much with the uh, the spherical Earth, not at all. They keep doing, They, I, I know that maybe could be a little messy to understand, but you need to follow, you know, step by step. And uh, this is just music in the background. There is no one talking. Uh, it's very self-explanatory when you take the time and start looking, um, you know, uh, minute by minute. It doesn't matter if it's in Spanish because the text that appears uh, in the video is just a few a uh, few lines uh, it's it's not uh, so much the the rest is just numbers that you can uh, interpret it it doesn't matter the the language itself and at the end just for for sharing this experience when they reach the end of the video they start explaining about uh, how the digital panoramic it's uh, make the, the, the calculations with the refraction or, or without the refraction, things like that. Of course, in both cases, you couldn't see that mountain because the distance and because the height of the observer. Uh, it doesn't matter that the mountain has 2,143 meters. Uh, the, the problem is that uh, the you, you need 2,400 just to see the tip of the mountain. So we left 300 meters uh, at least to start seeing the tip of the mountain. And we clearly see much more than that. Of course, you are not going to see the ground level because the distance, the refraction, the angular resolution, the, you know, all the stuff that we cover a thousand times in other videos, but at the end they just make this little upgrade 
not great, but for people to understand at least why you have this uh, range in the horizon where object is going to uh, disappear based on the angular resolution. In the left part of the video, we have a ruler, standard ruler of two meters, and we have this, uh, you know, this is a typical cloth that uh, the workers use in the, for example, in the highways or when you are outside and you need this uh, special reflection, light reflector in the cloth. It's just, uh, I don't know how to, to name it in English, we call chaleco. And they use that on purpose to uh, get the advantage of the light reflection of this uh, special material. The rest is just this yellow uh, cloth. And in the right side, you have the camera. I think it's only something around a few kilometers, five kilometers, six kilometers, something like that. This is the two guys. This is the yellow ruler uh, going down to the ground. And this is the cloth of, uh, of this uh, cloth here. So when they put it down, you can clearly see here and it's going to reach a moment when the cloth um, completely disappear. In this case, only about 40 centimeters uh, from the ground. It's going to completely disappear. So why they they do that? They, they, they did this because they trying to, like you see, there is no more cloth here, not based on the curvature of the earth, but based on the angular resolution, the perspective, you know, this Fresnel effect uh, in the sharp angles, in the angle of attack, I think yeah, you call it. But they do this trying to explain to the new people that this idea of uh, objects uh, hiding because there is a geometrical curvature is it's not the case. It's just uh, this behavior, this behavior of nature uh, in terms of the atmospheric conditions. And the rest is just self-explanatory. I, I mean, there is no any other way to 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 explain it. Yeah, a good word to look up if you really want to get into this topic. Look up, and I remember on a, one of your shows, Jaron, I had told you it was called Aries diffraction, and this was after like six months of studying this stuff. So I'm this is still one of my Mandela effects. That's a personal one for me, <laughs> but it's actually called Fraunhofer diffraction. So Fraunhofer. look up Fraunhofer diffraction, and that will explain exactly what I was talking about when I called it Aries diffraction. Can you yeah, can you type it? Yeah, it's, a good, out, it's a good uh, demonstration. Can you type in, in, in the chat? The, uh, there's the a fact? apparent band, yeah. which constitutes about a degree above the horizon, and it's um, it's essentially refracted light, and it it causes things to to disappear. And if you didn't have the optics that you have zoomed in like you do there, it would appear as if things are going over a curve. I mean, that's the optical of illusion effect that we get when ships going over the horizon appear to go over the curve but it's just an optical effect they, they're not going over any curve they're just um merging with the horizon and that yes. that horizontal band that constitutes about a degree over the horizon um it, it tricks your eye i mean it, it just so happens that the planar earth is the perfect place to trick people into thinking that you're on a ball in so many different ways this just being one of them i mean it, it really is it's perfect isn't it Yes, completely. Agree. In, in fact, they they put at uh, this moment of, in the video, they, they they put this image here because that is uh, the the most far away. This is the mountain at 180 kilometers. Of course, the rest of the mountain is uh, uh, mixing with all these uh, atmospheric um, conditions. But you can see objects, you know, 180 kilometers from a height of only one meter and a half, and it's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Uh, so this is, um, you know, we have a lot of people here in uh, Spanish community doing quite a lot of observation, and uh, we at least, I, I think, you don't have the same thing in uh, in United States, but uh, because we are pushing so hard with this idea. Of, of bring you know this information to the public that right now in the for example in the um, politics atmosphere you know the the the, the 
Congress uh, or that type of institutions, they are using all the time the the the, the phrase, "You are a flat earthers of uh, you know health," or "You are a flat earther of the economics because you don't believe that we have this problem in the economic things like that." Of course, you can take it as a bad thing, but it's 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 publicity. It's because we penetrate so hard the media, and uh, that they start you trying to you know reverse the uh, or trying to link with the bad thing the word flat Earth, and they are not uh, they, they are not uh, doing it uh, well because people keep uh, you know growing in terms of. Uh, trying to research about flat earth. So I celebrate every day that I wake up and uh, see more and more people doing, you know, doing their stuff. Uh, sometimes uh, they, we have new YouTube channels based on stories uh, or history, sorry, or based on uh, other, you know, type of uh, information, but also you need, uh, you know, ground, you know, uh, how you say, um, you, you need to, new people go into the playing field and and do experiments you know and, and trying to to bring new not new stuff because we already have a lot of this observation but with the new um, new places uh, and trying to go more and more uh, further every time. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I wish awesome more people would do here. stuff like that. Am I on mute? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 It's it's a, it's a and this is not <laughs> with uh, you know uh, infrared observation. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing special. This is just a regular camera, a regular P nine hundred, and this in the red line is uh, not the red line. The, the red square must be hidden, and that is not the case in our real nature. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. this is the the video itself. That was so funny. I was talking away, and my stupid speakers are muted. I'm not used to um, this being on this configuration. I'm actually on my laptop up in my room instead of down in my office. So <laughs> sorry about that. Go ahead. What were you saying? Um. Oh gosh. Now I can't. Yeah, yeah. What was I going to say? I was going to make a comment on what on what. Uh, uh Iru said and now i forgot what it was but i do know that I, when we do cut over to the rockman side which could um, be now there's yeah. a whole lot of stuff you know that uh i want to talk about with steve because you know they have been uh making some incredible documentaries the Dan the nano documentary um and Iru, this is it's probably going to freak you out if you haven't seen it but uh it's something that you should probably be aware of anyway but uh, I think that that's one of the things we're going to be talking about. I think it's really important that people hear it, but we absolutely will not be able to talk about that on the YouTube side at all. So I'll be um, waiting. I'll be waiting. Yep. And, first, and one, but, one, one little, one little, uh, you know, um, I don't know how to say in English, but funny thing, funny thing is because uh, you know here the 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 currency in the, in Switzerland. Swiss uh, money, it's all based on heliocentric model. I don't know if you know that. Uh, currency, currency. It's a, it's a way of propaganda, of course. Uh, that's that's the, the real thing. Uh, let me just show you very quick, very quick. But this is the new, let me see if I can take a, a good picture. This is it here, for example. This is a new uh, built um, paper money here in Switzerland and if you can see in the reverse area uh, it's let me oh fuck uh, well this is this is for example sorry but for example this is pointing the three um, axes in three dimensional space and yeah, that's the right hand rule right there yes that showing. yeah exactly and down here are the constellations uh, in the sphere it's a sphere constellation. This one, you can see two hands um, taking water, and down here is the Coriolis effects. And he, this is uh, not the Coriolis, no, the the currents, 
the ocean currents. The first one of 10 uh, Swiss francs, this uh, is a hands like playing an orchestra, di 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 directing an, or an orchestra, and they have a sphere with the Coriolis effects. And all the all the bills, you can see this, there are spheres, 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 and all have sphere and not just sphere, but related with, um, for example, this is a clock, which is the same of the, you know, that I mentioned last, uh, the, the guy who is directly in like uh, an orchestra. And here is the winds, then you have the constellation, there you have, it's all based of, uh, in terms of the heliocentric model. But this is, for example, the, you know, the air currents, uh, all the time, it's all spheres all heliocentric model and some friend of mine remind, remind me that in the in Italy uh, in San Marino in 1999 this was the 10 livras uh, coin which is pretty flat earther I don't know what you think about but this is the yeah, ground yeah. going that this is an official a coin. This is not uh, someone who made it, uh, you know, and, and trying to, no, no, this is the official, you know, with three stars, uh, like a dome, the flat earth in the middle and all the ground going like uh, in that uh, special cone shape. I just want to share very quickly as, as a funny thing, you know, because they use these me this medias, these mediums as, prop as propaganda. They use it. They use it. So that's a true. Yeah, they really do. Uh, oh. Completely different uh, little point. But I was talking on Discord in 24 7 Flat Earth Discord. I was talking about uh, we should just bring federal criminal complaints against NASA uh, under numerous different US codes, but one like frauds and swindles, for example, uh, is like uh, 18 something. And when you do that in individual capacity, then um, you know they have to handle it individually as opposed to a class action or whatever, where it'd be like one and done. And and you just make them have to prove what they're doing. When and I was talking about, for example, the ISS, where they claim it's 252 miles up, you know, going 5,000 miles a second or something crazy. So whatever it's five miles a second. So then the next day, and actually when I looked at it, it was something like five hours or so after I had that conversation in Discord. Um, there's an article that says NASA is announcing that they will crash the ISS into the ocean in 2031. <laughs> really <laughs> that's funny because they were they were talking about that i think ditr each even put out something uh, showed a cartoon right and they were gonna blow the iss out of the sky or do something like that um oh, yeah, and so that. they've kind of been telegraphing that to us so no surprise yeah it really tripped me out because the timing right i'm not in any way even suggesting that they were like listening to me on 24 7 and then came up with the plan to say the iss is crashing or anything but it was really crazy timing i would say that it would be like the creator if it wasn't the other one but either way it's funny because still 2031 it doesn't matter like uh my point still remains they they what would they do because if for one, you can you can get in trouble for filing frivolous uh, criminal complaints, right? But in order to prove it's frivolous, it needs to go to trial and be proven. Well, what I think that they would do, from what I've heard, is that there is like this certain type of s s lawsuit where it doesn't get disclosed. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? It's called um, – God, because somebody offered it to me one time before. This lawyer called and said, hey, I can get you a lawsuit against NASA, but – it's going to be this type of lawsuit to where they'll make a deal with you if you basically bring corruption to the government oh, through like a like an arbiter like through like an arbiter or something like that. That's, it's it's uh, make you sign an NDA to settle. Yeah, exactly. Correct. So, that, yeah. so I'll whatever, never dude, to spill whatever, anything. Bro, I wouldn't take the NDA though. I know a lot of flat earthers that wouldn't. Yeah, I no. know a lot of people that would say they wouldn't, and then would I mean, see that would ruin our show. 
if you had Twitter <laughs> offered to you, would you? I literally wouldn't, because they have to go to trial and prove it if they don't and in public record, and they'll try to national security. Psh, that's well. I actually, guess what happens most of the time when that happens is that they just settle out of court and nobody ever finds out. Right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the right. guy with the property tax thing, right? They well, here's the hard out. part. Here's the hard part, Austin, about suing NASA is that you have to prove um, losses, financial losses, right? That's how all court works. You oh, can't. Oh, it's very simple, right? So um, if they obtain tax money and under a false premise in order to get said money, that's by definition violation. Right. Contract. So then, but the problem exactly. is, but then you have to do a class action. You can't sue on your behalf. No, 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 yeah, no. You, no, would, no. you would have to do a class action sort of lawsuit against them. Really, that would be the best way to affect real change anyway, would be a class action. That's why they told you. That's actually a trick and a lie. They told you because what they'll try to do if it's a class action is they'll find a way to bury it and they'll act. Well, that's a mm. one in one precedent. Individual capacity is not that. Each individual person has the right to file federal criminal complaints, meaning they have to individually address them. And so, yeah. That, there may that, be, that, you know, I live here. If, I'm a if you, my money. They've made claims about what mm -hmm. they do with the money. What they said they do with the money is provably fraudulent. Here's beyond provable uh, or beyond probable cause <laughs> affidavit. Yeah, but what are you going to ask for in the lawsuit? Just for your money back? Because it's not going to be much. You don't even know. If you do it for monetary incentive, then I don't even I don't expect things to succeed. Really, if that's the primary incentive. So the, the thing is. You send in the uh, federal criminal complaint. Well, so, but you're, so you if you're go, suing, yeah, if you're yeah. suing for damages, the damages has to be something of substan like monetary, monetarily substantial, yeah, right? But, and so, if you're going to sue them, there has to be damages that they're paying back, whether it's punitive or um, whether yeah. they're, they're paying, you know, like paying paying for punishment or paying for you you actually losing your investment. Um, but I mean, I agree. I think it's something that we should totally look into as a community i just don't know what would be the best way to do it i mean do you know any good lawyers that would be willing to go to battle with nasa in a one-on-one -on -one yeah. lawsuit or yeah, would I'm, it be you know I'm what i mean like have you, have you ever heard of randy kelton um i've been talking to him uh re very recently about my uh, but he got the whole mask mandate removed for texas that cascaded into 20 other states um and so what you mm -hmm. do is the whole system so corrupt and this is a this is up there with flat earth about knowledge and we need to intertwine them um they they all lie and cover for each other like congress has the right to make laws not federal agencies etc there's no prosecution there's judicial discretion for certain group of people that's why there's broken up because the monarch went crazy with licensing schemes that's literally why america exists the way that it does and then whenever they do not do what they're supposed to do with the federal criminal complaint well then they now have a federal criminal complaint against them and so on and they continue to dig themselves in a hole and they will beg you with money to just let it go away. Right. If you do this with individual capacity, the B system is an as a demonic, empty entity run by people that are just lost within it. But they will acknowledge when you hit their pockets. And so yeah, they may not let it go to Supreme Court case and put it on CNN. Of course not, bro. And and like, oh yeah, obviously we can't prove the ISS. They'll give you three hundred million dollars, sign an NDA. You have a legal obligation to sign something that clearly uh is reasonable for your side. And that's yeah. how they'll sell their one thing they'll also do, Austin, is they'll tie it up in making motions and litigation and stuff so that basically it, it gets put off and off and off for years. And I don't know really any way around that, but I'm sure that NASA would be more likely to try and make a deal with somebody. Of course, if, if they do, that means that tells you that whoever's making the deal obviously has the goods on them, right? Right. And uh, that's when somebody's going to get killed. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. So whatever dude like say that i did it and they took me out then thank you for the confirmation for everyone i would hope that people would act accordingly right that's why i think that they don't yeah. do anything it's a, to it's us a good day it's a good day to die right uh yeah good yeah die. that's my it's, philosophy everyone for sure. just, the government like have to admit they can't prove the lie they say about the fairy tale second law of thermodynamics violation that is outer space i would i would be down yeah yeah so what were you gonna say jern um, I was saying that's why I think that they don't take us out is because it, it it actually gives too much credence to things. Yeah, right. we'd be we'd be martyrs right, essentially. Right. They don't want but, that. Right. You know, but I think especially with a lot of the stuff that we've been revealing lately. I mean, coming down, uh, revealing the the shuttle basically is a balloon, and most of the rockets is balloons, and it's getting so obvious now. 
it's crazy that they don't even seem to carry about it, care about it. But, you know, showing stuff like that as a balloon and showing that, um, you know, there's a very simple explanation that can be, that can be verified not only through mainstream, you know, this big mystery that mainstream science can't figure out about the electrical mode of the earth and why it's doing what it's doing. Uh, I'm certain we are on the right track on this kind of stuff. And this, that's the kind of stuff that they'd be wanting to make a deal on, I would imagine, but I wouldn't even want to try that because, you know, that would be, well, it goes against me personally and my, my personal morality, because, you know, the way I see this is, this is, this is us against the biggest darkness that has ever come across this earth, or maybe this darkness has always been here, but it's just not right, and it shouldn't be happening, and it's got to stop. So, and I think we all feel that way. I really do. So, um, I don't know. It's it's a difficult thing, but if we could get a law firm to to go toe to toe with them, and of course it's going to take you know tons of money and motions and. Because it costs a shit ton of money for, you know, making motions in court and all kinds of stuff like that. But if we could find somebody to go toe to toe and even get the public behind them, you know, and and, you know, get people to crowdfund them, then I think that would be awesome. Boy, would that put a lot of pressure on them? Right, right bro, because you can't you know, go to prove it, bro. And so, like, for me, I think that the creator set this up, bro. And I have these two First Amendment cases against federal courts. And so I'm going to test it out. Right. So. I'll be able to, to, we'll know definitively. I will go test it and live document it and, and we'll see. And I know it's going to happen. I'm filing a federal judicial complaint against a retired federal magistrate judge that can't be refuted. And, and they will just try to ignore it, but they have to report it to their insurance. And that is a big deal. And they've, li- they've kept these pieces of information from us where they are a corporation and they get you to agree to their corporate roles. You just say, no, 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 I'm not in your corporate roles, but actually I have a domain over you ironically. And here's what you're not doing lawfully. And they do not. That's that's the main thing, right? So if you can get it that far to where you, they want you to live in fear. If you can get them. How why why the do get 20 different mask mandates repealed? Do you think everyone thinks that Texas just stood up for our freedom and was like, nah, man, let's get rid of these mask mandates? No, Texas was forced to do it. it's federal criminal complaints going all the way up to the attorney general, literally by this guy, and they were like, okay, this is not looking good, and then he used politics against them because Austin has like some leftist representative, right? And so there's like he might actually try to prosecute on these unlawful grounds just as a political maneuver so like we got to get out in front of this so then they got rid of the mask mandate and then he called his little buddies like 20 governors throughout the u.s also did it with them that's what actually happened now did the the news tell you that do the truthers believe that texas all of a sudden was like had a a come to god moment and was like whoa this is wrong no he forced them and if he can force them we can all force them and and that's the move the move is to force them on their ground before and so if you could if you could get NASA all the way down to the point of legal discovery where they have to produce certain uh, documents and evidences and really you can go through all their shit with a fine tooth comb under legal discovery and a court order, I mean, that would be fantastic. I just don't think that their legal entities would allow it to get to that point, right? I mean, I'm sure they try to, to settle out of court and bribe you or then Oh, eventually, I'm sure they would probably try to kill somebody if it got that far to legal discovery, right? That's all evidence for, right? Like, even if they settle out, that's evidence for. If they, right. if they make someone find an NDA, that's evidence for. If like, And if people start to do this from different angles, uh, that's a lot of evidence for. And if they, if they want to try to not pay you and make you sign the NDA with national security bullshit that they make up, then, okay, it's going to hit public court record and everyone can read it. And they will never let that happen because they're lying. I know they're lying and everyone on this panel knows they're lying. So uh, how are they going to prove it? How, how can you prove something when you're lying? Well, so, I, I think it's good to put their feet to the fire. Absolutely. I think it's much better than I've seen this whole week, a bunch of people, so-called truthers, who sit around saying that the truck convoy is fake. And it, it just upsets me because I'm like, what, what good does that do? me off. Yeah, what good is that? That really doing? torques me. You it's know, like, celebrate flat that. earthers are are suspicious. You know, and I get that, right? Obviously, we've been lied to, but they don't seem to exercise a lot of discretion. You know, when it, it's just like you've said. You know, when when they come in 
And na- no, NASA doesn't want people to be revealing the things that they're doing wrong. They don't want the general people to be um, thinking that they're doing wrong. So why would NASA be actually starting uh, propaganda com- campaigns? Same thing with the truckers. It's like, you know, this is a grassroots movement. And because they might get an agent in there that may give a wrong impression on one side or the other, it's complete horseshit. Instantly, you have these clowns that are going off going, oh, it's got to be a PSYOP and it can't be real. Right. And it's like people, you really need to evaluate and look at what is happening and stop being so damn quick to pull the trigger on it's a PSYOP because these days – no, not so much. Not so much. The government is really, really struggling. They're really right now. And don't get me wrong. That they, they're always going to try and co-opt any movement. They're always going to try and spin it the best that they can. But it doesn't make the movement that led to that fake. And if you look at what's going on in Canada, I mean, just yesterday, the head Mountie, the head of security for for Trudeau, stepped down, gave a speech saying, "I'm not going to continue to infringe on people's rights. We have no right to be doing." This. So the truckers brought that on. So whether or not. Eventually, they say, oh, the food shortages are going to blame the truckers, and everybody's going to go, see, I told you, it's all by design. No, that's not the case. That's not by design. It uh, might be where they, lead, to, they take to it. To be honest, though, like if if I'm faced with a dilemma, my, my default stance is I disagree with whatever they push in the mainstream media outlets by default. And, well, of they, course, I'm going to reserve judgment to where, to where I'm didn't. actually going to look at the evidence and make my decision. But my default stance is just complete disbelief of anything they push in the mainstream media. And, and I would agree, but this was not pushed in the mainstream media. Go go look at NBC, ABC, CBS, CNN. They These these channels are not caring anything about it. Now, they might have to eventually mention it, which they did now, but they didn't at the yeah, beginning. Yeah, and then they, then they downplay it to the max, right? Oh, 100 oh, the, trucks. Yeah, and they say that yeah. the truck drivers are stealing food from the homeless. I mean, can, that's how desperate these people are. It's, it's the same thing like uh, what the, with the um, – Should we go, should we go to Rockfin? Should we go to Rockfin if we're going to talk about this? I forgot that we're on YouTube. Let's head over to yeah, Rockfin. They're giving, they're giving food to the homeless. They're actually donating their food to no, shelters. No, no, no. They're stealing it from them. They're actually going up to homeless men who have obviously <laughs> yeah. big old sandwiches <laughs> and chips and just stealing it from I, them. Before we get too far with the YouTube thing, like uh, just to say, and I'm trying to do it really fast, bro, like Canada, U.S., both, they're built on this thing called common law. It goes back like 800 years all the way to England, English law. That's what it's built on, common law. That is that you have- All the countries, all the countries are created by under the same system. It's a universal law, meaning all things under the creator, this is the known objective law, and that you have inherent uh, rights Mm -hmm. that cannot be infringed upon. Literally, that's the foundation of- Everything, unless so you let them, right? Unless you give them permission to. Enemy, the enemy wants you to think there's no hope. Uh, they don't want you to see that actually uh, what it's built upon decimates them. So that's my take. And again, if it it, it, it may even if it turns out to be bad or something happens, I, I don't understand the mindset of I'm going to sit at my house and say no, nah, it's fake, and tell other people that and post about it because we don't want people to think that. We want people to realize that you can get out there and speak out. Now, I've had people tell me when I went to the protest here in Sacramento. I'm like, don't you realize that you're admitting that they rule you? I'm like, whether I'm admitting anything or not, the fact is, is that we live in a country where there is a government who does rule you. <laughs> I mean, that sucks and it's not the way it should be. And we should, I'm an anarchist. I mean, I don't believe that we should have any rulers, but unfortunately I live here where some guys think that they do rule me. And if I have a chance to go and, you know, go to these protests or at least show my, my support for them to have people sitting at home saying, ah, oh, it's just fake. There's, there's no use in doing that. It's like, well, what are you doing? It's certainly better than what you're doing. It's certainly better than being at home and just saying everything's fake. You know? So Agreed. let's let's head over to uh, Rockfin. Thank you, everybody, at YouTube. And we will see you over there um, in a second. Yep. Thank you, everybody, at YouTube. And, uh, oh, we did get a super chat. I missed it. Uh, let me see if I can figure out who it was. Just 20, oh, yeah. 20, I think it was. I saw Tom O's on one of them. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, I don't know how to find it. I'm just not going to worry about it. Can I, when we when we go over there, I won't do this here uh, about the common law. I don't want to bum you out, and I probably don't want to release this to the public. Well, now <laughs> you have to. Way to go. Need help. But I'm, I will show you something on rock, Rockfin about common law that will blow your heads away. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, let's that's awesome, though, because I, I just know this is the way that you beat them at their own game. I, I guess the argument is, would you want to remove it completely because, uh, you know, who, who's in the best position right now? It was much more even back in the day. I don't 
you could i don't know that's a good conversation but i don't know yeah i hope i get some gravy i i just want to use... give you so some let's... gravy over on rockfin but i'm not going to do it publicly because they don't need our help because people are winning with common law uh but it's actually i'm gonna show you it's bogus so we'll oh, do man. that over James on Truzen? rockfin I want to have right, James True. We got to have you on the show sometime, man. I, I love listening to your stuff. You do some great stuff on NASA. You see it. Uh, I don't think he's ever been on Globusters, has he? No. I'll have to get you on the show. No, he never has been. Yeah. And I've, I've met James several times. He's a great guy. I've uh, oh, met- no, he has been. Actually, he has been on Globusters. Was he, on? he was one of our secret, super, super secret uh, uh, experts, uh, panel experts on Sonar. Oh, so I wasn't there. Nope, you weren't there. Uh, ben and I did it, or I did. I think I did it. It was just me that did it. Okay, I'm posting the link. Oh, somebody else is too. Good. There's the link. Head over there. Look at. So we've got 500 at YouTube and 150 at um, Rockfin. So let's say that 150 of the 500 are 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 watching on both for whatever reason. So that brings it to 350. So can we get to 400 at Rockfin? That's only 250 more. It's free. Yeah, oh, it would be I great if we could get you know so many people. Shit, did I make guys- it free? Or did I make it a premium? Oh, it is. It Oops. is such a good deal, um, you know, on Rockfield with with Rock Rockfin, excuse me, um, with the amount of truthers that are on there, and you get all the premium content, and you know, and it helps us out. You know, we're not going to lie about that. It helps us out uh, a lot. But um, the point is, is that we are able to go across and reveal information that we would normally be banned completely off YouTube um, on these platforms. So, you know, if you can do it, it's certainly worth the nine ninety nine a month. And, you know, if nothing else, try it for a month. Um, just hit that link that I am posting in Bob, the can I make today's YouTube episode, chat. Can I make just today's episode free? Or do you want to keep it on premium? Uh, it's up to you. Uh, just no, if, let's keep it on. Uh, let's keep it on. Okay, let's keep it on. Um, yeah, because I've been doing that too much lately, and I don't want to get in trouble with Rockfin either. Okay, yeah, I think the Sunday show we're supposed to have on uh, premium. Um, so anyway, okay, I'll put it back on premium. But yeah, it's a great deal. You get James True is there. Uh, I just saw Ole Dumagard was added this week. Um, Owen Benjamin's been added. I don't think he's doing live streams yet, but they're loading videos there. So it's going to be a place that's very easy for people to go and get. It kind of feels like the old YouTube. And is it a lot of preaching to the choir? Yes. That's why we need to have people share the shows. And um, Yeah, on Facebook, that. if you belong to a Facebook Flat Earth group, go sh- go you know share it there. I'm going to start doing that a lot because I belong to a ton of them. Um, it just takes a lot of time to share them on the, the show. So I don't yeah, always have enough time to do that. Yeah. All right. So I'm saying goodbye to YouTube. See you guys later. It's been fun. And thank you for the super chat. Uh, whoever that was. We'll see you over there. Okay. So All right. There. Sounds good. And we are on 